closed captioning provided by Ace Auto Glass. When you think glass, think Ace Auto Glass. Get your free online quote today. You know, Jim, it's interesting. You have so many beautiful bikes. And as we were setting up here, I said, well, you know, let's put your favorite in the shot with you. And you really had to think for a while, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the cleanest one, too. So. <laughs> is this the one with the original paint? Yeah, yeah. This is an original color, 53 Chief, which was the last year for Indian. It's also an 80 cubic inch engine, which is what they wow. used in the last yeah. three years. So it's... And how did you originally get into Indian motorcycles? I bought my first one from my brother in 1974. Yeah. So I was 19 years old then. Wow. So. What was it? It was a 45 Chief. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's, that was my first one and I still have it. Do you remember what you paid for it? $400. <laughs> but I had to rebuild the engine. So now yeah. it's another $1,200. Yeah, 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 there you go. <laughs> so, yeah. But. You're very involved in the antique motorcycle um, community and shows and such. Um, how much has that changed over the years? Uh, well, now that I'm older and retired, I have time to do more. Yeah. I s still wish I could do all of it, but I can't. Yeah. So I just kind of do the West Coast mm -hmm. rides when I can. And, and there's also a, a chapter in Reno, the Comstock chapter, that started, I think, f five years ago, about the time we moved mm -hmm. here. So I've been associated with that. So I, they do... They try and they do weekend Saturday coffees. They do every Saturday, mm -hmm. which I don't. I'm not going to drive to Reno for a cup of coffee because it's an hour drive each way. Yeah. So, but, but you have to drink a lot of coffee. Yeah, exactly, to make it worth the trip. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, but they're they're doing a run in September, which is their third annual run that they do. So, you know, most of your bikes look restored. At, at what level did you pick them up? Uh, most of them were basket cases when I got them. Yeah. So they were com pretty well complete, but they were basket cases. So I've gone through and restored everything on them. And mm -hmm. Some of them have new new sheet metal. I've gone to the bigger gas tanks, yeah. the four and a quarter gallon gas tanks on all of them, just to give me more range. Because I was when I lived in Las Vegas, I was riding with a BMW group, and they could go 400 miles on a tank, yeah. and I'd have to stop every 90. So. Yeah. So now I can do 110. Yeah. And they're old guys, so they have to stop every hour anyhow, so it works out well. So. You know, my hardtail is every 50 miles, <laughs> and on a hardtail, you're happy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's good to get off after a while, even if for even if 10 minutes, yeah. it's well worth it. Do you have any bikes that aren't kickstart only? Uh, my neighbor gave me a BMW K bike so last year, so yeah. that's, that's my first one that I've ever licensed. I've had two in the past, but yeah. I've never rode them. Never rode them? No. Yeah. yeah. They weren't worth putting batteries in. Now, the Indians, um, I've learned from Gary, who I'm traveling with, have the left side accelerator, uh, or, or do all of yours like that? No, only one I have is left hand throttle. Oh, okay. Uh, originally, Indian was left hand throttle, yeah. but most of them were converted because the right hand throttle is more common. So, but all mine were originally, when I got them, were all right-hand throttle. So but this 53 is right-hand throttle? It's left-hand. Oh, that's left-hand, because I was saying this, left this hand. looks yeah. like the shifter is on the right-hand. That would be a little yeah. precarious. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. It's, I converted it because when I go to Germany and borrow a bike, and I've yeah. been to Australia and borrowed bikes, they're all left-hand throttle. And it takes about 10 or 15 miles to finally get, get the right frame of mind. So I thought, well, this one... I'm going to make left-hand throttle, and if somebody from Europe comes over, they ride that one because that's what they're used to. And the foot clutch is on the left side? Yeah, the foot clutch is always on the left. Okay. Yeah, just the shift and the throttle are the only two that are the Only changed. thing that's different? Yeah. Do you ever sell any of your bikes? No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> we no. were joking about that at yeah. breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> you never sell anything? Yeah. No, no. Usually I give stuff away. But <laughs> No, oh, well, well but, when you're in that uh, mood, please remember me. <laughs> Give me your phone number. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. But. I'm seeing the Studebaker in the back sitting not so inconspicuously. <laughs> when did that enter the mix? 
That belonged to my father. And my father, can I say asshole? My father was an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> you can cut that. I'll, be, I'll, <laughs> but, uh, I'll beep it. Yeah. But uh, my father bought that from a friend of mine when I lived in Las Vegas. It's a 37 dictator. Yeah. And 37 was the last year for the dictator because Hitler and Mussolini weren't very popular in 37. So, <laughs> so in 38, they, they, they changed, changed the name. Yeah, they came out with a commander. Yeah. And, because they had the dictator and the president. Uh -huh. And then in 38, they yeah, Why did it. you keep it? Why did I keep it? Yeah. Oh, because I liked it. Yeah, you liked the car. Yeah, and it was my father's car. Yeah. But my father was going to Utah to help my, his sister build a cabin and her husband okay. in the summer. And he, took the, he bought this car and took it to my brother's house to pull the engine. And he couldn't get... He, kept telling my brother, I can't get the engine out of that car, it's too hard, or I gotta pull the whole grill off. And my brother said, yeah, I can get it out. So my brother was a mechanic, so he pulled the engine out in about 10 minutes, and it sat there. Uh -huh. So my brother called me up one day, said, I gotta get this damn car out of my driveway. So I said, well, I'll tell you what, Father's Day is coming up in three months. I said, you give me a list of parts, I'll buy the parts, I'll have the machine work done on the engine. You rebuild it. We'll put it in the car and we'll tow it to the old man's house and give it to him for Father's Day. So, wow. was, okay, great idea. So we did all that. We towed it down to his house, put it in his driveway. The old man came home about three weeks later, called me up. What'd you do with my damn car? <laughs> so what do you mean? I said, happy Father's Day, Dad. We, Tom rebuilt the engine for you. I want to do it. And he slammed the phone down and he never touched the car. It sat in his drive for 15 years with a rebuilt engine that never had oil put in it, never had the intake or exhaust manifold put on it. It just sat. So, with this paint? No, 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 oh. the paint was bad too, and okay. it was. But about four or five years before he died, he told me, called me up, if you want this damn car, come and get it. So, Since you ruined it. Yeah, so I went over and got it and took it home and restored it. And oh, actually yeah, a year yeah. or two before he died, I took him for a couple of rides in it, so yeah. he was happy. <laughs> But he, my father always tore stuff apart, but he would never put anything together. I'm going to switch gears again on okay. you. We could do this all day long. <laughs> um, I'll get a four speed. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with the uh, 57 Volkswagen? Uh, I've had that since probably 91 or 92. Yeah. That was one of the first, first Volkswagen. I grew up with Volkswagens. Yeah. My we, parents had them. So. Yeah. I was the fourth of four kids, so I yeah. was the youngest, so I had to ride in the back, behind the back seat because okay. my three older brothers had the back seat. Yeah. So my parents always had them. And was this one in your family? No, no, this okay. one wasn't. No, this, this one came out of central Nevada. So and, and did it have the supercharger on it? No, no, I put the supercharger on it. Okay. It's still a 36 horse, all six volt, yeah. still all original, wow. but, uh, except for the supercharger which don't tell my insurance company. <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, it's interesting. A lot of people who are into motorcycles, oddly enough, they, they still have that love of Volkswagens because when they were kids, they were cheap and easy yeah. and you could get to them. That's all we could afford. Though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And for a long time, they were that way, but they're not anymore. Not anymore, especially in, your, in the shape yours is. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it's, How did you come about this one? Uh, a friend of mine who lived in Beatty, Nevada, knew about it. It was in somebody's backyard in Beatty, oh. which is 120 miles north of Las Vegas. And he was, he was a gun dealer, so he was always wheeling and dealing. So yeah. he went and talked to the guy and told me that he, he wanted $1,000 for it, which was quite a bit of money. But yeah. I went up and looked at it and offered him 800 and he took it. Wow. But I had to do a total restoration, take the body off the pan, and what? go through it. But it was still still 36 horsepower when yeah. I bought it, still six volt. Yeah. He didn't molest that, but he took tin snips to the fenders to put bigger tires on. Oh. The hood was all cut up with tin snips because the hood latch broke and he couldn't open yeah. it. So. He couldn't, yeah. But but you went through that thing. I mean, obviously yeah. the interior is pristine. Yeah, and I've you know replaced all the sheet metal that needed to be replaced with original German stuff. So. And I noticed an extra gauge in there. Oh, for the supercharger. <laughs> and it's got a gas gauge, which it had in there, which is an, an original gas gauge. Yeah. Was that an option? It was an accessory. Yeah, you could buy, and the dealer would install yeah. it. So. Mine had that little 
flip the, switch. The reserve lever, yeah. yeah. I still have that. Yeah. You run out of gas and you reach yeah. down there. Oh, it's like the old bikes. Yeah. Ah. yeah, it works good unless you're stopped at a light. Yeah. Because then, then you're you run. But if you're coasting, you can you're usually coasting. put it in gear and then it'll oh, get the fuel going. And that rack, where did you find the rack on that? Uh, a friend of mine in Ohio had it. He was a German and he. Re he made his living restoring or working on Volkswagens mm -hmm. in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and he was retired. And I went back and visited him, and he had it. He says, you know, I got this old rack up here if you want it. I said, really, Gus? He goes, yeah, and he pulled it down, and it still had the, the, the tag on the front of it from uh, Corner, some company in Germany that made Oh, you mean the, the actual emblem, not a, yeah. not a string tag? No, like. no, no, the actual emblem riveted on to the front. And the wood yeah. slats, were that's all stock? Yeah, the, the wood's been replaced. Okay. He had new, I think they were hickory, hickory slats he had made. Yeah. He said, I never finished it, so I bought it from him. And, and you finished it? Yeah, I put yeah. it together and put it on the car. So. Wow, you know, those are the little touches. Yeah. They're very hard to find. That, that get you know that raise that eyebrow for the people who know, which is not me, by the way. I, I just think it looks. I just think it looks cool. Yeah, yeah. You know, we when we were talking earlier, we were saying that you know people who like antiques and restoring things are kind of like people who like to save stray dogs. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, yeah. usually it's motorcycles. Okay, I understand, you know, the Studebaker and the VW, but gas-powered washing machines? Yeah, everybody needs those. I, I was Y2K compliant, <laughs> but then nothing happened. So but the whole grid was <laughs> yeah. going down. Yeah, that's what I told Tony. She, we'll get some two-cycle gas and she can kickstart the washer. <laughs> I didn't even know they exist. Just talk a little bit about it for those who may not know. Oh, uh, in the 20s and the 30s, people didn't have, they didn't have the grid. So they either had a 32 volt DC generator, which I've got two of, or they had, wash, if they wanted to do washing, Maytag for another, I think 10 or $15, you could get a gas, a two cycle gasoline engine that Maytag made to put on the machine so you could do laundry. And there was a lot of remote places. Maytag made ringer washers until 1980 or 81. And that's finally when they, the factory finally quit making them, but there was still a, a demand. They made gas-powered washing machines they, they in 1981? Powered. They weren't gas-powered oh. by then. The gas-powered went out probably in the 50s. In the 50s. Because by then everyone had okay. electricity. Because the gas engines were pretty difficult to start. Yeah. One, one old guy told me that the Maytag gas engines are what taught women how to cuss. <laughs> Because I'd heat the water on the stove and pour it into the washer, yeah. put all the laundry in, and then the engine wouldn't start. And then the <laughs> water's getting colder yeah, and colder. Yeah. yeah, and then they'd have to try and fix the engine or get someone to fix the engine. So, so but uh, yeah, but a lot of them, there's still some in South America from what yeah. people have told me they're still using. Well, I'm, so. I'm guessing, you know, there are people who may have one of these. But how many people do you know that have five? Six. Six! <laughs> now, please don't tell me you go to gas washing machine shows. I take them with me to the engine shows. I'll take one. Do you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of, a lot of kids, a lot of 12, 14-year-old kids that they'll argue with their parents. That's not a washing machine. And I'll have it running, and I'll put clothes through the ringer, and I'll just, they, there's, they, don't, they can't believe it because they've never seen a ringer washer. Well, so. they, they've never seen a rotary phone. And they, they probably, yeah, yeah, that's true. They probably don't do laundry, so. <laughs> yeah. Mom has to do all that. So. Yeah, really. No, you just put them in this basket and they yeah. show back up folded. Yeah. It's magic. Yeah, and the husband will come up and show his wife. See yeah. that, you could have that. And I, I look at the lady, I said, why don't you put this on your Christmas list? And of course, I won't repeat what they usually tell me. <laughs> so. uh, but you know, it's, it's amazing, you know, that it seems to me that you have an eye for capturing periods in time that are basically lost. <laughs> Am I right? I mean, I see the lawnmowers in, in your, you know, those giant lawnmowers that look like, yeah, from the you 20s know. and 30s. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's, I don't even know where to start with, you know, I don't want to get off on too much of a ta tangent, you know, all the things you have, like when I see the generators that you're rebuilding and the, you know, and all this stuff. How do you find the time? Uh, just make time. 
Okay. Stay up late at night. But this stuff, they will, it'll never be replaced. I am, a majority of the stuff will never be made again. So if, if someone doesn't save it, it's gonna all end up in China, melted down and come back as Toyotas or something, whatever. So, so oh, you know, I, I just, I appreciate the old, the old designs, the old, you know, I, I don't live that. I have a yeah. 2012 truck, so, yeah. but, uh, but I, do, I do like the old vintage stuff and the old equipment and I, I like the technology that they used because at the time that was the best they knew how to do. Do, do you see a trend, um, you know, lately, especially with the internet and the, you know, why build it, just buy it kind of mentality yeah, going? Yeah, I see that a lot. Do yeah. you? Yeah. If you had anything yeah. to say to that generation, what, what would you say? Learn to work with your hands. Don't use your head, use your hands. Your hands, you can always make a living. Yeah. So that, that's my opinion. I still don't own a cell phone. I've never owned a cell phone in my life. I'm 64 years old, <laughs> never had a cell phone. So, and I'm happy. Yeah, and so. you, you can be proud of that too, you know, <laughs> because I'm a minority. <laughs> there are people who just heard that on television who went, that's possible? <laughs> yeah. yeah, my brother doesn't have a cell phone either. Right. I think I know seven or eight people who have never had cell phones. So. <laughs> how, how do you check Instagram? <laughs> I don't even know what it is. <laughs> Oh, that's yeah. funny. Yeah. <laughs> Emails are all I do. Now, did you make a conscious effort not to be a part of that? Or is just never came up? I just never felt a desire. I worked for the water department in Las Vegas for 29 years. And two years before I retired in uh, 2013, they took away my pager. I was probably the last one that still had a pager. 911, 911. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, or call this number. Yeah. I'd go on the radio and call back, but my boss took it away and says, well, how am I going to get a hold of you now? I said, well, that's your problem, I guess. <laughs> so, I don't care. And yeah. if you're riding a 1953 Indian chief and you're out in the middle of nowhere and it breaks down, what do you do? I can fix it, usually, if I have the tools or some parts, if it's not too catastrophic. Yeah. And you know, if it point. is, but has it ever happened that you're completely stranded? Uh, sometimes a battery cable will break, yeah. uh, or the points will close up, and you just regap the points. What did you do? Just get a screwdriver or a Leatherman I carry and just regap it and, or put the cable back on. You know, it's interesting that you would say that because so many people, when they have a cell phone, they wouldn't think to go that extra mental mile to yeah. figure it out. They many, just. How many 18-year-olds can change a spare tire? I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> My son can. Well, yeah. he's, he's 30. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. my guess is it's probably maybe 40%, but I'm guessing. But yeah, I, I talk to kids and say, oh, I, I wouldn't do that. Where's the jack? What is it? I, I, they don't have a clue. It's too bad. But. You know, it's interesting as I talk, you know, to um, the people Gary have introduced me to, you know, yourself being one of them, and I hear over and over that they're a little worried about the generation that doesn't want to use their hands. Yeah, yeah. The scary thing is they're going to be changing my diapers someday. <laughs> so, look at that. They'll, they'll, yeah, they'll be, text be, it. Be nice to them. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, hold on now. Yeah. Dad, just, just, just chill for a second here. I got a, I got a video on how to do this. Wow. Yeah. Why did you move from Vegas? It's, to me, it's turning into a rat race. I've lived there 35 years, and it's just, it's just like a little L.A. So out here in Gardnerville, it's, it's quiet. We don't have street lights. There's no stop signs on the streets here. People, instead of slamming a door in your face, they'll hold it open for you. It's just totally different. I, I like the lifestyle. I'm, I'm getting to that point in my life where I'm starting to really appreciate each day as time goes on. And that's, that's what you have to do. You know, my father was a miserable SOB, and he lived his life that way, but yeah. I, I try not to be. <laughs> so. I can tell because you smile easy, you laugh easy. <laughs> 
and you're doing what you want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's good Thanks, way to Jim. Put it. You're welcome. Guess the places that I've been. You never guess the places that I've been. 